So let's take a look at my home lab. I've done technology for a very, very long time. I love technology. And maybe I can give you some ideas around what you could be building in your own home lab, in your own studio, in your own home office, to be able to test and demo your own things. Because sometimes you don't always get the opportunity in a workplace to be able to actually tinker around with tech and learn things on the job. It's not always possible. Hey, before we do get into this, I release videos every single week, so do remember to click on the subscription button and on the bell. So as you can probably already tell, I've got some guitars behind me. These are some guitars that I've had over the years. I used to really be into the guitar, did the band thing, played music, and still do enjoy picking up that guitar and just shredding away. Then I've actually got this thing called an amplifier. It's a Vox amplifier and some pedals. So they're all connected together. And when I plug my guitar via these pedals and into the amp, it just creates really, really nice sounds such as distortion sounds, such as all these nice little delays and all these sorts of effects. I've got here a little shelf. This is some old IT equipment that I've acquired over the years. A Super Nintendo. I've got Donkey Kong Country 2. Moving up, the Nintendo craze continues where we've got ourselves a original Nintendo Entertainment System. To the left of that, a Nintendo 64. Above that, I've got the Back to the Future car. Love Back to the Future. I've got a little Mandalorian. We've got this sword that I picked up when I was traveling in Toledo, which is a place in Spain. Got a few posters spinning around the space. You can sort of see those in the background. I love my movies. I like my geeky retro games as well. We then move over to my desk. My desk is a raise up desk. It goes up, it goes down. I built this one myself from Ikea. A really nice sort of natural wood look. And then I went and actually bought the legs to actually make it race. We've got a couple of really widescreen curved 34 inch Samsung displays. They're USB-C, so I can just run those into a USB-C port. They've got docks on the back, so I've got all the peripherals. I've then got my speaker system. Now this is what's called studio monitors. So they're not really the same as speakers that you'd find that normally would plug into the computer. These are more for doing recording and they give you a bit more of a raw sound. This is a pre-Sonus uh, pair of studio speakers connected to a subwoofer uh, down the bottom on the floor. Let's go and actually have a look at my pride and joy being our server rack. Bit of equipment over here. We've got a screen on a monitor. Now that screen is connected into these things called KVM switches. The Nintendo craze continues with an original Nintendo Game Boy. Still works. I've got a Samsung tablet there. Really just for keeping the time. Now all of that stuff is sitting on top of this thing called a server rack, a server cabinet. This is essentially a space where I like to store all of my equipment. Now, if you're big into home labs, it's always challenging to figure out where am I gonna stick it all? Am I gonna put it into the corner of a room? Am, am I gonna put it inside of a closet, into a cupboard, into my garage? Well, no, I, I thought, you know what? It looks much better, it looks much neater if it's inside of this server cabinet, this server rack. It's got a little panel on the side, on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side, where I can actually open up the side of it. It's open on the back. It's got a nice perspex door on the front that I can open and shut so I can see what's going on in there as well because it is clear and overall it just makes it a lot easier. It just makes it really, really nice to have it all in one single spot. Down the very bottom, is a Synology NAS. This is a rack-based NAS. This one is an RS2212+. It's a bit of an older NAS, but it's rack-based. So you can actually stick a lot more disks into it. Above that is a couple of rack-based servers. These are both Dell PowerEdge servers, different models, different generations, and they have got ESXi running onto them. VMware's ESXi running onto them. Now you will probably notice that those three devices are turned off. They're not on. And the reason is there's a couple of reasons. One, they're very, very noisy. But secondly, I only turn them on when I needed to do more grunt work. So they are only turned on when I really need them to be turned on. All right, so just above that, we've got a tray. So this is a little server tray. You can pick these up quite cheap. It just slits into the side of the rack. And this is the great thing, of course, about having a rack is that everything is racked into the actual unit. You know, things don't really sit on top of each other. They're racked in place. So there's good airflow and things of that nature. And it just keeps everything a little bit cooler, a little bit neater. So on top of that is sitting a 
another Synology NAS, but this is now a desktop version. The one down the very bottom, of course, was a rack-based version, a DS920+. Plus. This is a four-bay NAS, so there's four hard drives inside of it, and this one is turned on. Now, this one actually is my backup NAS, and I use it to back up all of my data onto it so that I've got a separate spot just in the event that my data is lost, it's corrupted, I have a power outage and my primary NAS dies, I've got a backup of all of it somewhere else. To the right of that, are these two little awesome computers called Intel Nux. These are small little square sized computers. They're tiny. They sit in the palm of your hand and these are great just for this exact purpose, for a lab. Now they're not super, super powerful, but you can actually pick up some that are actually quite good, the i7s, and you just put the RAM inside, you put the hard drive inside. Both of these have got SSDs and these are also both running VMware's ESXi, VMware ESXi being our virtualization environment. And then I can actually build virtual machines inside of those. So above that, another server tray. This is now housing a, another Synology NAS. Now this is my biggest Synology NAS. This is a six bay DS1621 plus six bay NAS pumped full of eight terabyte hard drives. So this is the big one, eight terabyte hard drive. So there's eight times six drives in there. Now they are set up of course in, in these things called RAIDs. So they're sort of grouping the disks together, different storage pools. That one is my production NAS. This is where all of my data sits. So instead of me having a whole bunch of USB sticks, USB drives with a whole bunch of data all over the place, I've got all of it stored in this one spot. All of my virtual machines are stored on there. So we've talked about ESXi, but all of the physical VMs, where are they sitting? They're sitting on this Synology NAS. So that all of the data is stored on there. For every home lab, I'm almost gonna say it's essential that you get yourself a NAS of some sort. To the right of that is this smaller one. This is a TerraMaster NAS. This is a two bay NAS. The nice folks at TerraMaster decided to send me one of these. You can pick one of these up from Amazon. Two bay NASs, it could be a good starting point for you. Above that, another tray, another server tray. We've got trays everywhere here. And we've got two other computers. Now these are gonna be slightly bigger than the Intel NUC, but they are still small. And I just love the small form factor computers because they're perfect for home labs such as this. It's got a Mac Mini. This is not running Mac OS. No, this is running ESXi as well. Whole bunch of VMs running on there. And then an Elite Desk by HP, again, running ESXi. We won't go into too much of the detail about the VMs themselves, but in short, a lot of these are just for learning purposes. Domain controllers. Domain controller making sure that all of my environment, my home lab, my home environment, my home network can get access to a domain of some sort. So I'm running Active Directory. I've got DNS, I've got DHCP, I've also got a firewall, I've got this thing called PFSense running across my environment from my firewall perspective. We've got a couple of database servers, we've got a WordPress server for like the website, and then a range of Linux environments. I've actually got a Mac OS VM, and I've got even North Korea's VM running on here as well. Above that, we've got a couple of Cisco devices, a Cisco switch, we've got a Cisco router, and then a HP switch at the very top and all of these of course are racked and looking really really beautiful hopefully giving you a bit of a run through here around my home lab around my studio setup i've inspired you to go and do something like this yourself don't copy me though create it for yourself i mean everything here i got inspiration and ideas from other folks but then I made it my own. Down below in the comments, let us know what you've got in your home lab, or let us know what you're thinking about getting in your home lab. I love tech, hopefully you do too. But that's it, thanks so much for tuning in. Check out my other videos where we talk about all things tech. Do the subscription button, do the like button. We'll see you on the next one.